Hi, welcome to Pyrography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to explain how to create the sand dune. The reference photo that I used for this artwork was supplied by Marcus Clark. Marcus is being kind enough to allow anyone to use the photo, so I will put that on my community post page and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Well, let's get started. Sand Texture If you look closely at sand, you can see it has a very coarse, gritty texture. It doesn't take much distance before you can't see that texture. With the sand dune, it is too far away to see sand texture. So all you need to do to create the sand dune is to replicate the pattern of light and shadows. Photo Analysis here is the reference photo that I'm using for this artwork. You can see that there are people at the top of the sand dune. They don't add value to the image, so I'm going to ignore them. The dune has two major areas. The first area is the front slope, and the second is the shadowed back side of the dune. The front slope is receiving direct sunlight, so it is lighter in color than the back side is. Looking at the front slope, you can see that the left edge of it is the palest area, and it's the palest area for the entire dune. There are some footprints and areas of sliding sand that break up the front slope, giving it texture and some tonal variety. The shadowed back of the dune is covered with numerous footprints. Along the bottom of the dune, the prints are larger because they are closer to the viewer. As you near the top of the dune, the prints appear smaller since they are further away. Each footprint creates an irregular shaped well or depression. The bottom and right side of each well or depression is darker than the top and left side of it. Tracing With all of my projects, I print out the image or pattern onto standard weight copier paper. Then I coat the back of the paper with graphite. I like to use a pencil that is in the B range. Now obviously I'm using footage from another project because I didn't videotape myself tracing the dune. After coating the back of the paper with graphite, I secure the printout graphite side down onto the board. Then I use a pencil and trace over the items that I want. With the sand dune, I traced along the upper edge or the outer contours of the dune. Then I traced along the left edge of the front slope. After that, I traced around the rim or the upper edge of each footprint. I angled my printout to better show the pencil tracing so you can see what I've done. Here's how the board looked after I traced the sand dune onto it. Front slope. Begin by burning along the upper edge or the outer contour of the dune. Next, burn in the transition at the top of the dune where the front slope ends and the shadows begin. I am using either uniform strokes or very short zigzags. I am using Colwood's D shader, but any shader will work for this. Work your way along the left edge of the front slope. We are doing this just to define the outer edges of the front slope. I am using Colwood's D shader, but any shader will work for this. Burn uniform strokes along the right side of the front slope using the flat of the shader. The color doesn't need to be perfectly uniform. In fact, it would look better to have a little variety. These lines are not only given the slope color, but they are also giving the slope shape. Because of this, it is very important to burn the strokes at the same angle as the slope. Along the top of the slope, I am initially burning a little more vertically. In a short distance from the top, I begin to angle the burn stroke to match the rest of the slope. This replicates the slight concaveness that the top area has. I have my burner set to get a medium to dark tan burn result. Since I'm burning at a lower heat setting, I have to do a lot more reburning to build up the color. 
Very seldom do I adjust the heat setting on my burner. I prefer to set it and forget it. Now keep in mind that this is my preferred method of burning. That doesn't mean that you have to do it the same way. But I will say that burning low and slow provides the most control over the final results. As you work, make sure to keep the right edge of the slope a few shades darker than the left. This will do two things. First, it will replicate the photo. And second, it will help the dune stand out from the background. This is especially important if you don't plan to burn in the sky. Now that the front slope has a base color, let's add some texture. To replicate the distant footprints, I'm using very short zigzags, using the flat of the shader. This is producing an irregular shaped blotch. I'm also adding some darker lines to represent the slide marks. A green arrow is pointing to one of them on the reference photo. All of the lines and footsteps vary in thickness, length, and color. As I said before, I am using a zigzag stroke to create the footsteps. The further away the footsteps are, the smaller the zigzag strokes are. Slowing down your hand speed will produce a darker burn result. I very seldom, if ever, adjust the heat on my burner once I've gotten it to the point I'm getting a medium to dark tan burn result I want. Instead, I use hand speed and reburning to create different tonal values. This burn stroke demo shows the type of zigzag strokes I'm doing. I alter the thickness of the zigzag lines by changing the angle I'm holding the pin tip. The steeper the angle, the thinner the line. Or to put it another way, the less metal in contact with the wood creates a thinner burn stroke. I'm burning a dark line along the right edge to help it stand out from the background. Then I'm burning some jagged lines along the top of the slope to indicate areas where the sand has slid away. Then it's back to creating the footsteps and slides on the rest of the slope. I am mostly using zigzag strokes as my burn method to do this. As you work, keep in mind that your sand dune does not need to be picture perfect. Use the reference photo to help you with the shape and characteristics of the dune, but don't try to replicate every minute detail on the photo. After all, it's not like you're going to display the artwork with the reference photo adjacent to it. Is my rendition of the dune an exact replica of the photo? Absolutely not, but I captured the major elements. For example, the left edge of the front slope is the lightest area on the slope. The right edge is the darkest. I captured some of the slide areas. Those are the dark, thick lines that run down the slope. I also created the impression of footsteps. Capturing the essence of the slope is all that is really needed. Shadowed Back Begin by burning along the upper edge of the dune then burn along the edge of the curve. After that, darken up a little of the top. I am mostly using uniform strokes as my burn method, but I also use some zigzag strokes. After the top edge of the dune is defined, then burn along the right edge of the shadowed part of the dune. Next, start blocking in the footprints. The footprints do not need to be their final darkness. Right now we are just trying to give the dune shape and get a feel for what needs to be done. What I find helpful is to burn around the edges of a footprint or a footstep and then fill it into a light brown or a very dark tan color. With the small footprints, I'm using the same method to create them that I used on the front slope. So I'm burning thin lines, mostly using a zigzag burn stroke to do so. With the large footsteps, I'm using either uniform strokes or circular motion as my burn method. Some of the wider, small prints near the top of the dune 
were created by holding the pin tip in place for a fraction of a second. If you look at the reference photo, you can see that the dune is covered with a series of dark, irregular shaped footprints that form dark wells. The deeper the well or footprint is, the darker the color of it. The rim or edges around each well is much lighter in color, but the edges are darker than the left side of the front slope. The further away from the front slope you get, the darker the rims around the footprints become. I continue to block in the shadows, but I'm also starting to work on the rims or edges around each of the footsteps. With the rims, I am using either uniform strokes or circular motion as my burn methods. Uniform strokes gives the rims a base light tan color that is mostly uniform in color. Circular motion is also giving the rims a base color, but it has more tonal variety in it. And I will tell you now that one of the keys to the sand dune is incorporating a lot of tonal variety. Along the top of the dune is where it is darkest, but the color is not uniform. I first fill in the area using uniform strokes to give it a dark base color. Then I reburn over it using circular motion. My goal with the circular motion is to create irregular footsteps that have different sizes. I'm burning the footsteps darker than the base color of the dune. Doing this automatically creates the subtle rims or edges around the footsteps. The further from the front slope you get, the darker the overall color is on the dune. It becomes difficult to see any footprints near the upper edge of the dune. At this point, it is just a matter of burning the area to a dark brown color. It is completely up to you if you want to incorporate tonal variety into the area. If you don't, that works too. What I did was burn in the area using either uniform strokes or circular motion. This created some tonal variety in the area, but not a lot. Definitely not anything that really stands out. The further from the top edge of the dune you get, the more footprints you begin to see, and the larger the footprints become. With the small to medium sized footprints, I burn them to a dark color. The prints can be made using zigzag strokes, circular motion, or just holding the pin tip to the board for a fraction of a second. Afterwards, I burn the edges or the rims around each footstep. For this, I use either uniform strokes or circular motion. It's okay to reburn over the footsteps as you're burning in the rims. The rims are much lighter in color, so it's not going to increase the color of the footsteps by much. It's not going to hurt the footsteps to get a little darker. Quite truthfully, you could use this method on the entire sand dune and it would look fine. Just make sure that the color of the rims or the edges gets darker as you approach the left side of the dune. Also, when you burn over the edges, make sure to incorporate some tonal variety. The tonal variety does not need to be extreme, but the rims should not be uniform in color. You might have noticed I changed pen tips. Sometimes I like to try out different pen tips to see if they work better for what I'm trying to do. In this case, I wanted to see if the smaller pen tip would make it easier to create the thin edges or rims around some of the footsteps. The pen tip did make it easier to be more precise in the smaller areas, but it also took much longer to burn in the footsteps and rims. I eventually switched back to the larger tip I was using just to speed up the burning process. The size, shape, and depth of the footprints vary, but they all have common characteristics. So let's examine one of the larger footsteps in greater detail. The footprints have sloped sides versus vertical ones. 
This means that the color is darkest at the bottom of the footprint and gets gradually lighter as you near the top of it. The right slope on each footprint is darker than the left slope. Since the right slope is so much darker, it is harder to see the gradual color change on it. Before I continue on with the characteristics of a footprint, I want to let you know that the video is going to speed up considerably. The reason is that I'm just blocking in the shadows around the highlights or the pencil marks on my board. I want to be able to erase those pencil marks. As I burn, all I am using is either uniform strokes or circular motion. Back to the characteristics of a footprint. Another characteristic is that the right slope often is shorter than the left one, and that is probably due to the curve of the dune. The right slope often casts a shadow onto the left slope. The footsteps create impressions with very curved or rounded sides. Most, if not all, of the footprints have areas where other footprints overlap onto it. This creates a single, very irregular shaped print with differing depths on it. The overall color of the dune gets darker the closer to the right side you approach. So this means that the individual footsteps need to get gradually darker as they approach the left side of the dune. I think the most important thing about the dune to remember is that you are capturing the pattern of light and shadows. There isn't a special sand texture to replicate because the dune is too far away to see grains of sand. This means you can use any burn stroke you like on the shadowed back side of the dune. I continue to use uniform strokes and circular motion as my main burn methods. As to why I use one or the other burn stroke is just personal preference on how I feel at that moment. There is one other burn stroke I use on the right side of the larger footprints, and that burn stroke is pull away strokes. I start the stroke at the top of the footprint and pull the pin tip down towards the bottom of it. Sometimes I stop at the bottom, other times I stop just before the bottom, other times I stop a short distance after the bottom. Basically, I burn an assortment of lengths to create tonal variety. I want to reiterate one more time that with the shadowed backside of the dune, the only thing that we are doing is replicating the shadows and highlights found on the image. We're not trying to replicate a texture. I am using either uniform strokes or circular motion as my main burn strokes. I occasionally use some pull away strokes. The best advice I think I can give you is to work small sections of the dune at a time. Breaking the image down into smaller sections makes it less intimidating to work on. With each section that you do, I recommend that you begin by burning in the shadows, and then work on the highlights and the lighter colored areas of that section. Right now I am still blocking in the dune. The color isn't super dark, but it is more than enough that I will be able to see it after I erase the pencil marks. After the dune is blocked in and the pencil marks are erased, then I reburn over all of the dune to darken it up to its final value. When I start the reburning process, I use the same burn strokes and techniques that I did while I was blocking it in. In each section that I work, I always darken up the footprints or the shadowed areas first. For this, I use circular motion, uniform strokes, and some pull away strokes. After the shadows are in place, then I start burning the rims or the edges around the footprints using mostly circular motion and some uniform strokes. Now I have babbled for quite some time, and I'll be truthful, I've ran out of things to talk about. For the remainder of this chapter, you'll get to listen to Todd's music. Just 
Started talking again yesterday. Even one of us walked away. Maybe we didn't have somewhere else to go. We're always butting heads every day. Always wondering what we're gonna say. When it comes to us, baby, we never know. Oh, can't get along. No, can't stay apart. So let's call this a win. Each your beats losing again. Nobody's giving up. Nobody's giving up. Let's just call this a win Beats starting over again We push and pull and fight But never get it right Let's just call this a win Let's call this a win Stop when no one's right Never sure who's tall You should buy Why don't we let it go At least for now Oh, can't get along No, can't stay apart So let's call this a win Get your beats losing again No mind is giving no No mind is giving in Let's just call this a win Be starting over again We push and hold and fight But never get it right Let's just call this a win Let's call this a win Could it be that the makeups are with all the shakeups? Is this all full play somehow? Let's call this a win. Need your beats losing again. Nobody's giving up. Nobody's giving in. Just call this a win Beats starting over again We push and fold and fight But never get it right Let's just call this a win Let's call this a win Compare and Fix Here's the comparison between the reference photo and my artwork. My rendition is okay, but quite truthfully I got tired of working on it, and it shows. To me the most obvious problem is that my dune needs to be much darker. This image was photoshopped to darken it up, and I think that looks better. Compare it with the original, and you can really see the difference. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found the information informative and helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Thank you for watching my video. Did you like the video and find the information helpful? If so, please subscribe. That would really help my channel. Well, thank you, and have a great day.